Hello everyone and welcome back to Water Child Tarot. My name is Sarah and welcome if you're a new subscriber. I appreciate you being here and joining me today for this discussion of modern recolored historic decks or modern recolored pip decks. Um, this is another fairly sizable chunk of my collection and I've been feeling the weight of it um, for some time now and have wanted to go through and you know just just trim, just prune a little bit um, to get down to my preferred, um, you know, way of just storing and displaying uh, my decks and also the amount of overlap. Um, and so we'll talk about that in a little bit more detail. Let's dive into it. All right, so reflecting back on the previous video, I showed you this deck, which is the Dodal from Agnes of Cartogram in France. And the reason I'm showing you this is because it relates to a modern uh, pick that I have right here. This is called Playing Marseille. So we're going to start today's video by looking at a few um, uh, sampling of cards that are hybrid decks between Marseille and playing cards. And this one by Ryan Edward it is produced by US Games. Um, and it is based, the face cards are based on the Dodal. So um, I really like playing card decks and I think uh, they have a lot to offer and I, I, I just think they're so much fun. Now you can see that it's not an exact match here um, on this particular card, but you can kind of see some of the um, facial expressions are similar on Ryan Edwards uh, cards and so I just want to sort of point out that for me um, I don't need a full historic Dodal when I already have something in my collection that gives me um, what I like about this deck which is sort of the the goofy expressions the the weird um, choice of you know, pose and, and facial expression for, for these cards. So, and Brian Edward even, you know, pulls in and exaggerates some of these a bit um, for us, which just makes them that much more readable. He also intentionally left the uh, paint a little bit sloppy as if it had been kind of stenciled in here. But um, in terms of his line work and actually seeing the detail on the faces, it's much, much clearer. Let me hold these up. So here you can see um, how Ryan Edward has taken the uh, inspiration from the Dodal, um, but just made the line work that much more clear and legible. So I, again, I, you know, I have limited space, I have limited, um, it sounds snobby, but I almost have limited interest at this point, really, um, in these kind of historic decks. And I can appreciate their value from a learning perspective, but at some point I just want to read my tarot cards. So I am perfectly happy um, in this case with this modern recoloration, even though um, the pips are completely different. So instead of the, the standard uh, TDM type pips, you do get playing card pips here um, like this. So... Um, but that's kind of another element that makes this, this deck unique and makes it different from other things in my collection. So there's that. I mentioned playing card decks in my collection, and so I'll show you a couple of other examples of those. Um, these are not going anywhere, um, but these are the Rare Triumphs by Ian Cumsty. Um, and this deck is, again, um, kind of a mashup between a Bolognese um, with these alternate uh, celestial cards. And then also, once you get into the um, suit cards, you get this mix of sort of Terra de Marseille embellishments and arrangements with the playing card um, suits. So this is the Nine of Diamonds, but it kind of looks like they're diamond-shaped coins. Um, let's see if we can find some more examples. Here you have um, clubs that are clovers and their stand-ins for the batons or the wands suit. And then you have hearts, um, and they look sort of like little brick, brick wall hearts. But these would be the cups, 
and then here are the spades or swords um, so they look like little spades or pike tips so that's um that's this deck and again it's it's kind of a mix of tarot de marseille taroka bolognese and uh playing cards and then um just his own modern sensibility of some of the some of the cards for example this is the trickster instead of the magician um, and you know here's a sun card with a woman spinning so you do get these kind of different different takes you have love instead of the lovers with a lover and let's see oh yeah chaos instead of the devil card so that mix and match kind of um, choices that he's made have really brought this one to life for me and I really I really enjoy it okay and then I have one more kind of hybrid playing card deck to show you and this I would think would go in the modern recoloration pile because it's based on as far as I can tell based on the Claude Burdell but it does have modern um, playing card suits mixed in with the pips again, but in a different way. So here's the cups, but you can see a heart here. And then you have these, you know, kind of traditional style uh, face cards. Then you get the coin, but you also get the diamond there. You get the sword and then also the spade. So this is the, um, this is the angel uh, tarot cards produced by Stuart Kaplan in conjunction with the Angel Playing Card Company out of Japan in the 80s and I've talked about this one a number of times on my channel but I wanted to show it as an example of you know something I like with modern uh, bright colors that are not necessarily primary colors and then just a twist on the way that the suit cards are presented combined with a more historical um, quartz and trump cards so there that is. Now I had started off this video by talking about historic decks and modern uh, recolorations. So let's take another quick look. We saw the Dodal, and this is a deck that I showed in my last video as well. This is the Noble by Joseph Peterson, um, and that one I'm going to be getting rid of for two reasons. One is that this is a facsimile with um, you know faded uh, paint, loss of line work. Um, kind of inconsistency in the quality of each card depending on what the quality of the original uh, was um, and also because I have this deck this is the multi Marseille it's a, a fairly new production from Tom Benjamin and it is based on the Jean Noble it is a modern recoloration deck um, and it is very much based on the Jean Noble, but it has figures um, that are more diverse. So you get folks of different um, ethnicities, different skin tones, different hairstyles, and then he's even worked in um, some, you know, nods to other kinds of diversity, so different abilities, um, and just, you know, different um, body shapes. And that kind of thing. So I really appreciate what um, Tom Benjamin has done with this um, effort, you know, trying to make um, historic decks like this a little bit more accessible, a little bit more appealing for folks to explore this type of um, card reading. Um, the pips are unaltered, essentially, so you still get these kind of, you know, two and three color uh, pip cards, but then again, the um, court cards have the diversity added back into them. So, um, you know, so that's an, an interesting mix and match the way that he's done this. Um, really nice card stock, really nice card size. Uh, it's the same, I believe, as what would be the original. Um, and you'll notice the Peterson does have the square corners, this has rounded corners. Um, but yeah, I think Tom Benjamin's done a really good job with this effort and I appreciate you know his intent behind this he's also not making any money off of this deck um, essentially this is up on make playing cards it's also available on his website if you wanted to download your own copy of the images and you know print this at home you could do so so it was not about um, you know cashing in on diversity for for Tom Benjamin it was just about making this available so I appreciate that um, and this does appeal to me more than this because it's been cleaned up and because it has this added element
element of diversity. But I think the thing about this is it still has these very, um, you know, kind of blah pip cards that just don't don't attract me to doing readings. And so I'm not 100% sure that I'm going to hang on to this deck. I do have another Marseille that has diversity. And so I wanted to also compare it with this, which is the Terra Sirene. This is from Wandering Oracle, the same uh, person who brought us the uh, Marshmallow Marseille. Um, and Georges, uh, I think is out of Mexico, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and this is, as the, the box and the name implies, it's a mermaid deck. Um, and it's a mermaid Terra de Marseille. And uh, it has this beautiful like, shimmering um, iridescent quality on the back. Um, it has these very squidgy sea life kind of pips. And then the face cards are all mermaids. Uh, merfolk of different types. So, um, and here we can also see that there's body diversity, skin tone diversity, hair diversity. Um, and I love that about this deck. I think it's really beautiful and sweet and, you know, also has some of that sense of humor in it. Um, but the pips are just, you know, so much more embellished and interesting. Um, look at this guy riding an alligator. You know, I just, I love it. I, I really love it. Um, and so for me, this does the trick of being an interesting and engaging deck um, that also has has the diversity uh, tick box checked as well. Um, and that just makes it, you know, it makes it possible for me to kind of discern and say, do I really need this in my collection when I'm not that excited about and would rather read with this one? Um, somebody somewhere mentioned like the dad bods on some of the kings and I, I absolutely love them now. You know, these kind of like chonky muscular dudes um, are, are just, I don't know, they're just lovely. I really like them. And I, and I do like the, the color palette, you know, in the pips, you get a lot of more variety and softer tones in the coloration. So for me, this deck is going to win out kind of over, you know, our modern noble and our traditional, our traditional noble as well. And in keeping with this theme, I have one more comparison to make for you, and that is these two decks. So both of these decks are based on the Conver, um, which is also a French historic deck. I do not have a historic reproduction of that deck. Not a huge fan of it, to be honest. Um, but I thought I would compare these two and talk a little bit about them. Um, so this is the CBD, the Conver Bendov Tarot by um, Yuav Bendov. Um, he has also written a book that I highly value um, about the Tarot de Marseille. And then this was his retouching and re- um, coloration of the cards. Now he tried to go quite um, traditional with his card design. He, he didn't really make any um, drastic changes. He simply wanted to trace and recolor to kind of clean up the line work and make these more easy to read for people who are trying to learn Terra de Marseille. So you can see we have this high contrast, stark white backs, um, I will say he did a decent job again with the skin tones here. Um, people know that I don't like the shrimpy pink color in a lot of these historic decks. So he went with more of a tan. Um, and, you know, because this is a repainting or a retouching, um, sorry, just a completely overhauled version of the deck, all the line work is clear and crisp. Um, I will say that you lose some of the character. There's no shading per se. Um, it is just like, you know, each, it's like, this is all the same tone of yellow. This is all the same tone of blue. And what I liked about my Gasman Tarot, for example, or some of the other um, historic decks that I have is that you do get a little bit more depth with the shading. So this one is, you know, I think it's great for a beginner. If you want to see what Tarot de Marseille is all about, um, that might be interesting. But another version of this deck that I have that I like better is this one. It says Le Tarot de Marseille from uh, Fournier. And this is also based on the Convert, but it has really intense colors, almost sort of blow your socks off colors. Um, 
and the backgrounds are all colored in and you get more um, shading and depth in the faces. So here, for example, this guy looks a bit like he's got a five o'clock shadow. Um, I don't know if you can see that. There we go. It's a little bit better. Um, the shot, the, the horse has some shading on it. You know, the ground is not all flat. Um, and you get color coding. So the background of the swords cards are this blue. Uh, the background of the coins cards are this soft yellowy green. Um, and then the wands cards are a darker green. And that leaves cups, which are this sort of beautiful, like persimmon color, um, really saturated, corally, orangey color. Um, so that adds a lot of interest. And also, the color coding helps you when you're laying out a big spread to see which, you know, how many of which different suits you have. Here's the difference in the, yeah, it's not quite a lime green. It's it is more of a yellow, but it's a yellowy green, and then the the saturated green here. Um, I don't love the correspondences, like I would have liked to have this be the fire suit and whatever, but um, it's totally fine. Now, even though this is based on the Conver line work, the same line work, this artist um, has actually shaded the faces and just given the characters and the backgrounds, the scenery, a lot more depth um, with the, the added detail. And I, I really like this deck a lot. So if I'm going to keep a Conver, I will probably keep this one and rehome the CBD um, because this one has more sort of color engagement for me. However, there is also another contender for some space on my shelf. And so if I start feeling pinched um, in this section, I might have to ditch this and go with the Spanish Tarot, uh, which is also for near production. You can see the boxes are really very similar. Um, there's the tops. And both of these are vintage decks, but I think this one at least is still in print, and I believe that one may be as well. Um, this one is based on um, a deck from 1736, and it is called the Ottone deck. Giuseppe Ottone would have been the original producer of this. Now, the original looks nothing like this in terms of coloration. It's very plain. Um, I did mention this in my video on Piedmont style um, Italian decks, Tarocco Piemontese. Um, I did a walkthrough of this, so, which you can find compared to other Piedmont style decks. And so, um, so you can see that the coloration is bright and modern, but what I like about this one is it's also bright and modern, and so is this one. And this is the only Ottone deck that I know of um, to be reproduced. So this again gives me a different um, original source for the artwork and then as well as these bright modern colors that I just love. And I do like the facial expressions again are very... Um, I, I can't even put my finger. They're sort of sassy and humorous um, and I really really like them. I love this um, kind of electric uh, highlighter yellow um, in some places. Again, you've got lots of different colors going on. And then even in the pip cards, beautiful, beautiful colors in the pips that just set this apart from any other um, Terre de Marseille style deck and, um, you know, give you so much more in a reading. Look, turquoise, lavender, purple, coral, olive, teal, lime green, you know, it just, it goes on and on. Um, and then the great costumes uh, and all of that. And, and just, you know, very invigorating as a reader to, to lay this deck out and um, enjoy all the bright colors. So for me, um, in the sense of the coloration, these two decks kind of fill a similar space. Um, but currently I have room for both of them on my shelf, so I'm going to be keeping both of these for now. This is my Conver representation, and then this is the Otone, which um, I don't think you can get the Otone in any other, you know, format. So if you're into collecting um, decks from different time periods or different uh, card makers, historic card makers, this is a great one to have in your collection. So speaking of modern uh, recolorations of decks that, you know, either 
can't get or very hard to get um, from the same maker of the mermaid tarot, the tarot Cyrene, um, we have the Marshmallow Marseille. And this was actually the first deck that Wandering Oracle put out, so you might be more familiar with it. Um, comes in a similar cute box and similar holographic uh, backs to it. I love this little deck. Um, it's a bit more plain than the Tarot Cyrene, uh, but that's because it is based on a historic deck. So this one is based on the Tarot of Vala from the 1700s, also known as the Tarot de Trieste. Um, and I will put a link to um, A's channel. She has been known by a few different um, monikers over the years as she's shifted her YouTube focus, but I'll, I'll link to her video where she shows the deck that this is based on. So that there, there are some museum reproductions of this deck available, but they're very hard to get a hold of, and in my opinion, they're not really worth the, the spend and the hunting um, because uh, they're hard to find, they're hard to import. When you do get them, it's very cheap card stock, and the print quality, again, is that you know, very sloppy um, line work and all of that. So I'd just rather have this, um, knowing that the, the line work is based on the Vala tarot. So you get the same facial expressions, you get the same costumes, but you get this updated sort of spring, summer, pastel kind of color palette. Um, you get a little bit more in terms of the embellishments and all of that, but you still get the, the line work and um, some of the details from the Vala. So um, I have at, at times wondered whether I needed to keep both of my Wandering Oracle decks um, because the color palettes are similar and you know I don't read with these that often. In terms of maintaining a deck collection that represents different card makers over time and different regional uh, styles. This one, you know, ticks a couple of boxes there for me. So I am going to be um, keeping my Marshmallow Marseille in addition to my Tarot Sirene. All right, speaking of um, modern decks that aren't like anything else, um, let's look at this one. This is the Tarot de Roi Nisanka. And this is by Maria Nestre. Um, it is based on artwork style of Sri Lanka um, and of the, of the time period when the king of Nisanka would have been uh, in, in ruling in office. Um, this is produced by Grimaud. It is unfortunately out of print and very hard to find. Um, I got this in a J Japanese auction kind of by luck. Um, I had to buy it again with another deck, um, but it's gorgeous. I saw it on A's channel and I actually asked her, I was like, do you want to sell that to me? And she's like, nope, it was a gift from a friend. Get your own. And I totally understand. But again, beautiful pips with, you know, such inspiring detail in the artwork, um, beautiful coloration. And then of course, representing um, a culture and a people that we really don't see in tarot, even just, you know, Southwestern Asia in general. Um, we don't see uh, a lot of folks that look like this. So I like having this in my collection primarily just for its, you know, beauty, um, but also for, you know, having this kind of representation um, in tarot cards, I think is very valuable. And it's absolutely, absolutely breathtakingly gorgeous. Um, I don't read with it as much as I would like to because I don't know when or where or how I would ever be able to get another copy of it. Um, like I said, I do see it online now occasionally, but rarely. Often it's an incomplete deck, it's missing a card or two, or the box is destroyed or something. Um, so I feel very lucky to have come across this at you know, pretty low price um, because the prices for th for these kinds of decks now has just shot through the roof. So I do personally, this is a complete sidebar, but I think there's going to be a tarot market bubble. So if you don't want to pay three, four hundred dollars for um, what was originally a mass produced deck or the backs, um, I, I think give it a couple of years. I think we're going to see those prices coming down. Uh, but in the meantime, that is the Tarot de Rua Nisanka. 
and it's lovely and it's unique in my collection so it's not going anywhere here is a deck that got me started on Terra de Marseille um, when I first discovered uh, that Terra de Marseille existed that there were decks that were not fully illustrated um, this is one that came across my radar and that I liked um, I didn't really connect with the you know primary color uh, decks the historical decks but this one is based on you know, a gas man plus a couple of others, perhaps, but it has this really cool artwork. Again, the the bright colors, and um, this sort of crayon or pastel kind of look to the way um, things are colored in. So it looks hand drawn, hand colored. Um, there's shading involved, and I like the faces on this. Again, you get pinks, um, different shades of blue. Um, and gold that is not a harsh yellow it doesn't hurt my eyes to look at so this is fun it's clearly Swiss influenced with these big round cups um, but yeah it's it's you know it's also a very early um, Stuart Kaplan production for US games so it has that going for it and I love the card stock it, it shuffles really well um, now do I need this many you know modern recolored decks in my collection no um, I don't know where exactly this would sit compared to what I've been showing you. Um, again, I don't read with it as much as I used to when I first got it because um, I have others and this is vintage and it's out of print. Um, but yeah, it's staying for now. Um, it sits on the shelf next to the Gasman because it's, it's based on that historic deck, but it's got its own, um, you know, its own take and its own sort of voice to offer. And then I'll show you one more modern deck since we are um, on the topic. And this is completely um, unique. Um, it is not based on any other uh, previous um, historic time period or specific deck that I know of. This is the Tarot de Maria Celia by Leonard Jim Narciso, who is a Filipino uh, artist. And it's a tarot in a tin by US Games. I love this format and size. Um, I have edged it in this sort of gold color and because I thought it matched really well with the uh, margins here this, and as well as the sort of margin on the back. Um, so I felt like it gave it that like polished, you know, antique -y kind of look. This deck reminds me of stained glass or painted glass. Um, the color palette does and I love the expressive faces. The, the heads are a little bit enlarged so you get beautiful um, detailed expressions. Um, he also did, uh, Leonard Jim Narciso also did the Vanessa Tarot, which is uh, as, as well. Um, it is available from US Games and it features very bobblehead looking figures, um, but it is fully illustrated. So it's got the, um, instead of the pips, the Marseille style pips, it has full illustrations based on the RWS. So if you're interested in checking out more of his work or if you like these faces but you don't like reading with Marseille style or Pip decks, um, you could check out the Vanessa Tarot. But again, you know, you can see I'm drawn to this, um, this kind of color palette with the lime greens, the persimmons, the pinks. Um, you know, I'm starting to realize actually looking at like between this and the marshmallow and, you know, the Tarot Classic um, and then some of these Fournier decks that we looked at. I do kind of have a lot of decks that have similar coloration to each other. So that's sort of a note to self um, to say you do you do have a lot of these, um, but but I like them. Uh, that's why I have a lot of them. And, you know, I'm not um, someone, Lisa Pappas kind of talks about this too um, in her her uh, deck decluttering videos or her, her videos where she's trying to choose new decks for her collection. Um, you know, it's okay to have a deck, more than one deck of a similar style, if you really like that style. Um, I mean, it's okay to have whatever the hell you want in your collection, frankly, but uh, don't feel pressured to have a wide variety of things if you don't like to have a wide variety or if there's not very many styles that you do like. Um, so that's kind of how I feel about, about this. Um, 
And I read with this deck often because it is mass produced. Um, I don't worry about damaging the cards. Um, it comes in a tin, so it's great for travel. I'll probably take this with me on vacation. And um, I've gotten some really good readings. So in that sense, I'm also very you know fond of this deck because I've turned to it for, for questions big and small for myself and for friends. And it's always been, you know, very sort of to the point, um, very reliable in the way that it reads as a tarot deck. So it's not just for the pretty, the pretty pictures, um, but it's also the readings that I've gotten with this that make me uh, a little bit attached, frankly. Um, but oh, that that card was turned around because it was on the the top of the deck, and I that's one I drew out last week, and that had um, significance that day. So you know that's it's just kind of reminding me like yeah I give good readings don't don't get rid of me so don't worry uh, I won't okay <laughs> um yeah so that's the tarot de Maria Celia all right so we have two more sets to go um the first sort of grouping I guess you could say is modern art decks and what I mean by that is artists' unique takes on the tarot. So on the left here, I have the Nuovo Tarocco Ligari Piemontese by Matteo Guernacia. Um, he is an artist that is still active today. He was very involved in the psychedelic scene of the 1970s and um, produces paintings and other works of art, including this tarot deck. Now, I did do a full comparative walkthrough of this on the channel uh, when I talked about Piedmontese decks. So if you're interested in seeing this card by card, you can check out that video. Um, but just uh, to kind of recap, in case you haven't seen it, um, again, this is all done in watercolor. It was self-produced. And um, it does have a different look, but is an updated modern version of a Piedmontese deck. So characteristics of a Piedmontese deck, um, we have the fool with the baggy pants and a butterfly. Um, we have a uh, magician that is a um, kind of a cobbler. You can see some knives here and there might um, traditionally be more kind of um, things like uh, clippers for working leather and things like that. But then he branches out and really, you know, incorporates his own style on um, the face cards and then uh, gets into some very interesting choices um, along the way. Here we have a very Hawaiian looking temperance, but there aren't any other uh, cards in the deck that have a Hawaiian flavor to them. So I don't know why that one is sort of randomly stuck in there. Um, and so you can see it does follow the traditional, you know, Italian or Marseille style of historic deck, but it has, you know, his own twist and coloration. Here we have a little bit of that um, idea from the RWS creeping in with the sunflowers um, and the way this angel is stylized. So clearly he drew on a number of different sources um, for this deck. My problem with this deck is the pips. They're so plain and they're so one note. Um, that it's not really a fun deck to read with. Um, the court cards are strange, and usually strange is enough to keep me coming back to a deck, but um, the, the pip cards are just, you know, they're just like this. The cups are more colorful, um, but then, you know, as you saw with the clubs and then into the swords here, and I think even into the coins, to some degree, yeah. Um, just very limited, no decoration, very limited color palette. So this is one that I just don't reach for. Um, I don't necessarily love the art style. I think it's different and I can appreciate the talent that went into creating this. But in terms of keeping it in my collection, you know, it's just not one that really pulls me in. Um, it does have a very papery card stock, which for a collector's item always makes me a little bit nervous to work with in terms of whether the, um, you know, whether it's going to hold up or whether it's going to wear away the artwork over time with use. Now this one is a uh, more recent art deck. This is the Tarot Morandi, and this was originally um, Kickstartered, and it is by v Vicente Molina, I think is he goes by Molina. Um, Pardo is the second part of his last name. Um, and 
this is just his own interpretation. I think neither one of these um, artists is particularly a tarot, would consider themselves a tarot reader, but for whatever reason were interested in tarot and decided to make their own decks. And sometimes you get really cool and inventive um, different takes on the cards when you get somebody who's sort of from outside tarot, as it were, um, doing some, some interesting artwork there. So, uh, for example, um, uh, so this guy's clearly in, uh, influenced by sort of cubist artwork, Picasso and so forth, um, and we'll see that more in some of these faces. And I do like his take on the pips a little bit better. Um, also, this cardstock is kind of um, plasticky, and it just, it seems like it's going to hold up really well. There's no worry about, you know, ink rubbing off or anything like that or getting stains on the card so you could just wipe off any dirt. Um, the pips still are not very highly decorated but uh, I like the face cards enough that that doesn't really bother me. Um, and so you can see here some of the faces are kind of similar so all the older men for example have this sort of Santa Claus like face um, but the arrangements of the pips is different than what we would see in Terra de Marseille. So that, again, brings a different flavor in. Um, and then you do get some diversity in terms of the, um, the look and feel of the folks that are represented here. And that I do appreciate. There are also a few extra cards. So there's the, the thank you card, which is really just more of a title card or something like that. You could leave it in. Um, and read it as like a gratitude or something like that. But there are two yes and two no cards and I've left them in because sometimes we do get yes or no questions in tarot and on the off chance that we can actually get um, a very clear yes or no response, I think that could be um, interesting to see. So that that is it. Um, oh, I had a friend over and she was playing around with this so that's why the cards are in all different directions. I don't normally read with reversals, especially not in pip decks. Um, but anyway, you can see um, <clears throat> kind of the art style here. Now it is still somewhat plain, um, but the, again, the face cards give me enough to work with and they're, they're different um, to other things in my collection. So I enjoy that. And um, apparently this deck is also going to be used in a movie and I don't have any more information about that but there was some note somewhere about you know oh now this is going to be a collector's item so part of me is also waiting to see how that pans out um, what movie we're talking about um, and if you have any information about that let me know but otherwise this is just a fun one um, it seems to also appeal to other people sometimes i'll put out a variety of decks for people to choose from to work with and um, when they flip through this one for some reason people seem to be drawn to it more than these other kind of historic looking woodblock style um, decks so that's another reason to keep it in the collection is that i've actually done a number of effective readings with this one um, here's the yes one of the yes cards so yeah, so this is just, just different enough um, and just interesting enough, I think, at least to stay to stay in the collection for now. So again, that's the Tarot Mirandi um, by Vicente Molia Pardo. Um, and I believe he's Spanish originally. This guy is Italian. Um, so yeah, some, some tarot history uh, loving cultures there. All right, and then for my last pairing, I wanna show you um, two decks that really depart from the historic, um, traditional Terre de Marseille in that they do have pictorial pips. So um, this is the Svatoyansky Tarot by Eva Frankova. She is a Czech artist, and this um, deck is still available from Czech bookstores. Um, I had to get some help by email from one of the Czech bookstores to try to purchase a copy and have it shipped to the US. So it's a little tricky, um, but it's not that expensive. I think the deck itself cost me around 15 euro, and then it was only around you know, another 10 euro or something to ship it. It was just more the consternation and the hassle of trying to communicate back and forth and actually get the order placed. So these are some of the cards. Um, it is very thick cardstock, and I'll talk about that more in a minute. And then this one is up against the Tarot de Marseille of the New Incarnation um, by Eugene Benitsky and Elsa, I'm not sure how to pronounce that last name. Um, now this one, interestingly, is also from folks that sound like they're from I don't 
know, some kind of Eastern Bloc country. Um, sorry for overgeneralizing. But that's the that's the deck. This does come with a full booklet in English. The Svatoyansky comes with a full booklet that is all in Czech. And I did translate some of that, and I went through um, in a long video and did a walkthrough of this to explain who each of the characters are. So um, if you have this deck or you're interested in getting it, I highly recommend my little video if you're an English speaker um, and you don't want to try to translate a whole booklet, I can at least give you like the Cliff's Notes version of what the cards are. Um, okay, so the Tarot de Marseille is a more recent um, deck. Neither one of these is particularly old. This is like the 2000 and maybe 15, something like that. And then this one is... Um, 2021. It was a Kickstarter project. It is still in print. Um, if you just look it up on the internet, Terra de Marseille of the New Incarnation. And it comes with a certificate of authenticity, authenticity um, and a kind of a title card. Terromania is their um, company name. So that's not the two of coins in the deck. That's just a like a signature card. Um, here are the backs of each of these decks. I haven't been showing a lot of backs, but I like both of these. This is more traditional Terra de Marseille with like a geometric design. And then this is the tree of uh, the tree of life from the Svatoyansky tarot. Svatoyansky translates as the, the um, tarot of the summertime. What these decks have in common is again illustrated pip cards and illustrated in the same woodblock style as you would find in a Terre de Marseille. So this heavy line work and then some uh, fairly simplified color palette to fill them in. Um, but each of the cards is inspired by a tale, a fable, a myth, or something like that. Um, so let's talk about this one first. It comes with this booklet, um, which does not fit in the box, but that's fine. You know, they've taken fables of the time period from Europe and assigned them to the different number cards and then drawn an image to represent that fable. Um, now, this sounds really complicated, and normally overlaying stories on top of cards is really, I find it kind of difficult. But what I appreciate is that they chose the fables first and then illustrated them so that you can get the kind of the gist of the fable just by looking at the picture. And I did run through this whole booklet when I first got the deck, and I may not remember all the details of each fable, but I I can kind of get the symbolism um, behind the card. So that's, you know, that's really cool. Like here, I think it's, you know, a couple of people who are helping out a widow um, after she's lost her husband and they brought her some food. And that corresponds with the Five of Cups. So you get the idea. It sort of works like an RWS, but it's not, it is kind of its own thing too. Um, but it's not so much of a stretch that you're going to be completely lost. You would just have to, you know, memorize maybe a couple of keywords per card um, to get you started on this journey of learning this. Now you'll see that the um, court cards and the trump cards all have a similar um, style. I think they've done well blending here, but these look like traditional Marseille cards. And that is because this is based on a deck called the Tarot Medellin. It's another one of those, you know, like the Noble or like the um, Dodal or some of the other well known um, Tarot de Marseilles that have this style of um, presenting the court cards and the trumps. And so those will look very familiar. They have they have essentially copied those out of an extant deck and then added in the illustrated pips to sort of match in with the colors. And you can see they've matched the color schemes as well, um, the style of the woodblock and all that. It's just here you get smaller figures and more action. So I, you know, I really like that. Um, I have one other um, deck that's sort of like this. It's a Japanese deck. Um, and I'm kind of keep those in their own category. So it's nice to have one that just shows um, fables and stories, but also keeps that woodblock Terra de Marseille kind of imagery going. Um, yeah. So there's that one. Okay, so then we compare that, and now the Svatoyansky Tarot really does a very similar thing. Um, it's just that with her, uh, with Eva Frankova's choices, she's really blended biblical stories, Greek mythology, and uh, a hint of RWS, and then some also personal stories. So um, again, I don't necessarily have all of these memorized. 
but um, you can sort of see that these are different characters throughout the ages. Like here we have, you know, something that looks like uh, 18th century um, ballroom. You know, here we've got, um, oh, this is, uh, oh gosh, Pillar of Salt. Um, help me out here, internet. Uh, this guy who's, you know, he's leaving his family, or he and his family are having to flee, so that's a Bible story. Um, there is somebody else from the Bible. Um, sorry, not up on my biblical folklore. And then you have more traditional, um, as you do here, you have the more traditional Terre de Marseille kind of court cards um, and trumps. So it is a mix, um, but it's even more of a mix. Like this is, um, is it Abraham who had to sacrifice, was called on to sacrifice his son? Yeah, um, clearly my biblical mythology I struggle with. Um, but here, here's, here's Hermes, you know, so here's a Greek one. Um, so it's a little less cohesive, I would say, um, than, than this one. Um, I do like the color palette is a little more varied, but um, in terms of where the myth, myths and legends and stories come from, they're all different. Like this is the Midas touch. You can see here's King Midas and he's holding his daughter who's turned to gold. Um, and there's even some, like this one is from her own personal family. This is a family member who was pregnant at the time that she was developing her ideas. And so she's used her family member to represent the seven of coins. So not a bad image um, for the seven of coins. I like that. Um, so I don't have a huge critique on this. Um, it's just a little bit less cohesive. And there's a lot of Christian mythology in here. Um, which is not entirely my cup of tea. Um, so I think I prefer this deck over this one. The other thing about the Svatoyansky tarot is that it does have a heavy rose petal finish kind of cardstock, um, and that makes it quite difficult to shuffle. So I found that I really was not reaching for this deck very much because of the, the stickiness of the cards. They are getting a little bit better um, as I've used them, but I've already decided to get rid of this deck and pass it along to a friend. So friend, if you are watching, um, this will be coming to you now that I've made this video. Um, this will be coming to you soon. And yeah, I'm happy for somebody else to enjoy it. Um, I, I like a lot of what she's done here, but um, just between the card stock and the sort of, um, I guess it's a little bit too scattered in terms of the source of her material, whereas this one is all just folk fables. Um, to illustrate the pips cards so they're not they're not biblical they're not greek they're not um anything like that they're just sort of common folk tales from europe uh from you know say the the 16th and 17th centuries so i i like that a lot the other thing is i really love this card stock it shuffles really really well it handles nicely it's actually kind of similar um in some ways to the giordano berti card stock which i've raved about i talked about in my um, historical decks video uh, the last episode of the this for that um, but it also I think is identical to the cardstock used in the moon baby tarot which if you have this deck or you like this kind of cardstock um, just know that this one is exactly uh, exactly the same as far as I can tell um, they're not credited as to where they're printed but in terms of the feel the weight the thickness everything seems to be identical so um, so that was a fun discovery so that is my choice for a allegorical, fully illustrated Tarot de Marseille. Um, we're gonna go with the uh, Tarot of the New Incarnation and I'm going to be passing along the Svatoyansky Tarot to a friend. And again, I just wanna say thank you for joining me for these, um, you know, paring down and um, assessing my collection kind of videos. If you like this kind of content, please be sure to like and subscribe and let me know. Um, I have a couple of other categories I can go through, such as 1970s decks, 60s and 70s decks, as well as Japanese decks. I also need to kind of pare down those sections of my collection. So if you enjoyed this, let me know, uh, give it a thumbs up, and I will be back with more tarot content very soon. Thanks and take care.